In its recent meeting dedicated to artificial intelligence, Tesla made a bombshell announcement at the very end by claiming that next year they will present the prototype of a humanoid robot capable of executing tasks that are dangerous uh, or boring that uh, are today done by humans. This announcement is really the opening salvo of a new era of humanoid robots among us and it is important that we start a conversation in really understanding the implications. In science fiction books, or even in more ancient uh, mythology, we would always find artificial beings of human form. I, Robot, the wonderful series of short stories by Isaac Asimov, introduced us uh, to his famous Three Laws of Robotics. They are not a good prescription for designing and implementing how a robot should obey. They are more a tool for creating ingenious conflicts uh, that are then resolved uh, within the short stories themselves. But our fantasy uh, is piqued by them. Uh, we do want to see these robots uh, in, in our society. For the past 70 years, this did indeed only belong to science fiction. But recently, uh, we have started seeing uh, the possibility of humanoid robots, uh, at least in uh, research type uh, experimental environments. The first uh, was ASIMO by Honda, the Japanese car manufacturer, and uh, ASIMO would be bipedal, but very, very slow, very, very tentative in its movements. One of my children uh, actually uh, had uh, a contest uh, with uh, Asimo many years ago, and he was too small to understand that everyone was uh, looking forward for the robot to win. Uh, it was to uh, score a goal uh, in a uh, robot uh, soccer match. But he was uh, too eager to fight and he wouldn't really uh, let the robot uh, win. And the robot was too inferior uh, in its uh, movements uh, versus uh, humans. Uh, then we had uh, the DARPA Grand Challenge uh, for um, emergency interventions, where we looked at videos that uh, uh, made us laugh uh, how these uh, humanoid robots uh, would uh, almost universally fail even at the most elementary tasks like opening a door or climbing uh, stairs. With uh, the evolution of the robots uh, that clever YouTube videos showed us by Boston Dynamics, uh, we started laughing a little bit less because these robots are astonishingly good. In my own definition, they are superhuman because the type of jumps and somersaults they are uh, executing with acrobatics uh, that appear flawless, well, those are not movements that I would be able to make without breaking in pieces. 
I say they appear flawless because those videos suffer from survivorship bias. Uh, we do not see the videos where, there, where the jumps and the somersaults do not succeed. We only see the careful editing of a final cut where everything appears perfect. What is the difference between these experiments and research projects and Tesla's announcement? It is that whether in a year or two or five, Tesla has demonstrated to be able to deliver surprising innovations that experts in the field are betting against and to do it at scale. Meaning that these are not research projects anymore, but they are products that consumers uh, and businesses want to buy and produce in the hundreds of thousands or millions uh, of units. The Tesla humanoid robot is going to be similar to the Tesla cars in the sense that already the cars that Tesla is producing have sensors that collect data, which is analyzed by advanced artificial intelligence and that allow actuators to plan ahead uh, in order to achieve the desired goal. In the case of the cars, we are talking about the cameras uh, and uh, other sensors that uh, perceive the environment and, of course, the goal of keeping the car on track as it drives itself with very little or zero human intervention at an increasing uh, degree of uh, dependability that uh, starts to exceed uh, human driving capabilities, statistically speaking, and where uh, the explicit aim by Tesla uh, is to be a thousand times better driver than a human driver. So they recognized that they are already building robots. So why a humanoid robot instead of a car-shaped robot? Well, not only because certainly Elon Musk is a science fiction fan, also because we live in a world built for humans. As a matter of fact, until a hundred years ago, our cities and all of the environment uh, that uh, we created did not much accommodate uh, what today we call a car. Streets and roads were uneven. Uh, the pedestrians uh, would walk everywhere. Uh, there were no traffic lights or other uh, symbols uh, informing a driver, human or robotic, what uh, uh, the uh, particular road meant uh, and what you needed to do in order to obey uh, the laws. It took us a hundred years to uh, give way to cars and admittedly in some places, like for example, Los Angeles or many others, uh, cars are now much more respected and welcome than not uh, humans uh, without wheels. But there are a very large number of environments that are naturally uh, and luckily still uh, better suited to the human form. As soon as there are stairs anywhere, um, our homes, uh, our offices, uh, and of course the myriad environments where humans now perform manual work. So a robot shaped like a human, as long as it is durable, resilient, uh, capable of interpreting the environment and planning and executing 
the steps needed to achieve its goals uh, is going to be particularly fit. So can we do it? From an AI point of view, I would say we are very close. We are uh, able to interpret uh, vision, the environment. We are able to plan literally the step necessary for a robot to balance itself on two legs. Uh, I wonder how much the dexterous hands are going to represent a challenge. Um, we have examples of dexterous hands, but uh, not enough yet to uh, be on par uh, of human hands, as demonstrated by the presence of uh, human warehouse operators uh, employed by Amazon, for example. We definitely do not need uh, breakthroughs in artificial intelligence in terms, for example, of uh, artificial general intelligence, of consciousness, self-awareness. Uh, just like a self-driving car doesn't need to wonder about philosophical questions of its own existence, a humanoid robot uh, that uh, is uh, working in a warehouse or uh, in, a, in a mine uh, or in a chemical plant or any other uh, environment uh, is maybe even better without being burdened by self-awareness and introspection. And the interesting question, of course, uh, is what the impact uh, of these robots uh, going to be on our uh, economy and on our society uh, when they are going to be available in large numbers. There are a myriad of situations where they will be incredibly beneficial. Uh, already we have a large population of elderly uh, in so many societies that are insufficiently cared for, or they are relegated in hospices um, uh, while they would definitely choose to stay independent in their own homes. However, the availability of the human help they would need is extremely scarce and as a consequence very expensive. Could a robot be uh, made available more cheaply uh, in order to help an elderly person to stay autonomous as long as they can and want to? How many occupations uh, are better suited uh, to robots because they are dangerous uh, or, or boring or those that, that humans are now forced uh, to execute, but they wouldn't if they had a choice. The labor market will need to adapt. Our societies overall will need to adapt. There will be whole new questions uh, arising. And then, of course, there are environments uh, where the robots are going to be extremely useful and these environments are definitely uh, adversarial uh, to uh, humans operating in space, on the moon, on Mars. Imagine a large number of robots preparing uh, the moon or Mars for the arrival of humans before we uh, go there ourselves. The new world of humanoid robots is here and I am definitely looking forward to the important conversations that will open as a consequence. The implications are huge and I believe that the advantages to society are going to be very large indeed. Thank you very much for watching or listening to this episode of The Context. 
Uh, if you like what you hear, uh, consider becoming a fan, a sponsor, a supporter, a benefactor on Patreon at patreon.com slash David Orban. Thank you.